go to softtrap.com. Let me go to softtrap.com. Jack, can you also show us one of your favorite examples of a uh, interactive multimedia? Why, yes. Soft talk. That's actually what I want you to do first. That's your first task. Uh, okay, where am I? How about you? Good. So, let me. Thank you. All right. So if you go to softtalk.com, I'm going to show you one that they did because we're we are at the crude starting phase. But um, softtalk, if you go to showcase and sample lessons, I'll give you a sense of some of the tools. And here they put up some nice. These are sort of all you know kitchen sink over instructional design examples, but it gets the idea. I like this ethics and privacy one on the bottom. So softchalk, all one word, dot com, and then um, showcase courses, and here we are. And let me just, I'll give you a sense of what this does. So y when you start a softchalk document, you can literally start with Microsoft Word file. And this will actually let you cut and paste Microsoft Word directly into its editor. It uses an external Java editor. It used to have an inline editor that would work in the browser, but because browser companies are now blocking the use of Java, that doesn't work anymore. So you have to download their external editor. Your, their external editor will make you fall in love with the idea of never using Java again. <laughs> and they are eventually going to replace that with something that's written in a real programming language. But that's where they are right now. But at least it's cross-platform. So you start off with a Word document. If the Word document uses head, heading one and heading two, which is still surprisingly foreign to most people, but um, you know, if, if you format it that way, it will bring it in as a document that is laid out. It will convert the heading one to an H1 tag and HTML and so forth. So it'll actually make a nice web document, but it will make a clean document out of Microsoft Word, and that is something that is really useful. These are the headings. This rather plain and not an inspiring table of contents is automatically generated by SoftChuck. So this is a heading one, that's a heading two, and it goes up to heading three. So it, it lets, gives you a structure. You can choose whether or not it does this. There's an on-off switch for that. So in this particular case, it has it. What we're finding is that with students, it's better to have this so they realize this is a multi-page document. Otherwise, they hit the next button in Brightspace and miss all the content. So we put this in there. And so we go ahead and click on this. And I think I will skip to Ethics in a Corporate Environment. So this is the page I was showing you. And you'll see that how it lays it out is there's a header, which you can turn on or off. I actually leave it off most of the time. These are page numbers. You can put a name in, but it's only an eight-character name. And that requires a lot of creativity for pages. You also have next and forward, and there can be a drop-down table of contents here if you want to do it that way. These sidebars are automatically generated again, so it's, it's navigation inside of the document. And then there are interactive elements, and this is where we get into the rich media. Some of these you say, eh, really? Like here we have a nice anthropomorphic um, Flipbook. That looks very hyper I know. <laughs> I know. Some of this, yeah. But some of the tools we like, some we don't. Embedding video is not a problem. Again, most of this, most of the styling is built into the style sheet of this document. And I'm trying to find. It's kind of funny doing it this way. I want to find an embedded. Ah. There we go. So here, I'm not getting much. For some reason, I'm not able to scroll on my own computer, which I don't understand. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, computer. Um, so you have these kinds of things where you can put a lot of content. And actually, starting to work with faculty and think about, OK, well, you have a, you have, you know, a general organization of five things <coughs> you need to remember, and you can express it this way, playing around with it. These are all relatively simple to make, as you'll see. Again, an embedded video. And then this is the nice part. There are different ways to do evaluations. And, and again, this is where I say it's not the prettiest software on the block. This is what it's going to look like no matter what you do. But it does work. 
And so you can, and it makes noises, and I won't go through that. So there, and of course, there's the usual. And if you go through this document, you'll see there are multiple choice. There's all this kind of stuff. But again, as you go through this thing, there's a score that's being kept right here so that you, know, you can actually have a content score and you can make sure that's, that your students are going through all the content and that they're comprehending it at a level. So this, that's all configurable if you decide to do things that way or not. These are all things that our faculty are identifying they, they would really like to have. You know, get a, lot of our, a lot of our instruction is helping people get better at going to college. And so a little feedback, things like this are helpful with them as well. But this is a nice document to explore. It, again, it gives you all these things. Let me go to one more page. Yeah, so these are what, these tests can be put as individual questions. These are called quiz poppers. Or they can be put into a series of five, 10 questions. You can do it if you like to do multiple choice quizzes as a comprehension check for low stakes or something like that, this is perfect for it. Which is the only thing you should use multiple choice for, but that's my opinion. So, you know, again, this all works out fairly well. It's not like it's easy, but the programming part is easy. The putting the stuff in there is its usual tedious self. So this is, a, that's a, like a, a, a quick overview. But again, the point of this is, we had a problem, first of all, that was content, ob content object oriented. This does that. This, it's almost a side benefit that it does the multimedia. This lets us centralize our content. And those big, long text documents can be quickly formatted into bite-sized pieces. So that helps, too, as we re massively redesign 130 courses. But then the addition of these kinds of elements and its integration with the LMS was what sold, sealed the deal for this solution for our problem. And if it solves your problem, you know, that's great. But it's like, you know, for, for us, this, this is what we need. So I invite you, why don't we just play? Let's yeah. think about it. All right, take a look at your activity sheet here and go ahead and dig in. Um, again, the most frustrating part of it, I think, is getting it going and making sure that your Java works and Firefox seems to work better than Chrome for the creation of it. Mm -hmm. We'll play around with this yeah. a little bit, ask individual questions, and then uh, no, come okay. back together. Okay. And, uh, okay. so uh, I had that. And, if, and if I can, there's one thing about it. There's an external editor. Go for that. Firefox will launch the web version. But you can't do anything. Yeah, you can't do anything in it. So, so, down, so here, let's just do it real quickly and I'll... Um, so if you say, you're going to have to sign up for a free account. That's your medium thing here. You got that. <laughs> and don't worry, you can put in a fake name. They're nice people. They're in Richmond, Virginia. How bad can they be? And do I have to sign up for this thing? And then, yeah, they'll ask for your name, name firstborn and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> it will then download an ed So download the editor is what I guess I'm getting to. And when you do, you'll be looking at. And that's called the download and create local launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Local launch. I never can remember what he calls it. Yes. So, two general questions about this. Um, one, is this an interface where students have to buy a subscription at all to use it? No. And two, does this support any sort of um, synchronous video chatting? No. Okay. Yeah, it's not a social media platform. That's its, that was its downside for me. Um, <coughs> they're a small enough <coughs> shop where I think it will be because of their architecture. This, is, this scratches the content delivery itch. And but it, it does let you embed iframes, so if you can embed a, a chat program as an iframe, then you might be able to do that, right? Yeah, that's not, we haven't tried it yet. Okay. So I hesitate to say it's a feature. Here's a challenge for the day. So, so if you embed it, you're embedding it as a chat program. Because if you use it as like online, yeah. of course, yeah. you still need a separate platform. So yeah. if you want to hold any sort of synchronous face-to-face -face right. video, and, uh, video. Yeah, and what we're doing with this right now is this, oh, yeah. is, our, this is replacing the content part of Brightspace. 
It's not re replacing bright space. Much is better. Did I say that? Yes. So um, for integration into sort of like something like Canvas, obviously there's the URL, which is sort of like the most basic integration. Right. Um, but then like beyond that, um, have you given thought as to what those requirements? I mean, uh, you mentioned LTI, yeah. so is that like a, like what does that mean? Is that just for grading? Is that, is there other types of integrations that you're aware of? It is just grading. Okay. What's, and, and you know, I would log into my, my account, I'll do that later, but yeah. um, you're given two different links. Mm -hmm. So in Brightspace, what you'll do is if you want to just have the page and there's the page, mm -hmm. you make your page, you go into the interface, you put the page up, it gives you a URL that is specific to that page, and then you do an external link and that goes into, into Brightspace very nicely. Mm -hmm. If you have an LTI link, they also have an LTI link right below that. You put that into your uh, I want the extra special powers tool mm -hmm. part of Brightspace and it gives you the LTI icon. Yeah. So it does that. It's primary in back and forth. Well, no, let me take this back. It's primary back and forth is um, is grading. There's also the ability with this thing to do tracking, time on task, all that kind of stuff. So it has it uses Google Analytics on the page. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, and really beyond that, there's not much because Soft Chalk is so self-contained as far right. as its media mm -hmm. objects go. It's not going to interact with the, with the, you know, and most of our LTI in integrations anyway are really not much more than single yeah, it's sign just on. Yeah, it's just a connection. We do have a single sign on with this for faculty. Although they're, so, so that part of it is, you know, that you don't have to log into this tool separately once it's set up, and that's part of LTI as well. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's really, you know, like when we go to Pearson, all we're doing is saying, go to Pearson. We're yeah. not even able to get grades right. back from them. So the, and yeah. then my, my follow-up to that was, um, in order to get the private server, is that a dip or a private um, cloud account? Is that a second, is that another tier from like a basic plan? Somewhere yeah, like yeah, okay. it is. Okay. I mean, okay, the, I mean, the money involved, again, it's based on how many people and all that kind of stuff. For us, it was 5,000 a year for the, for the soft chalk cloud. It's 17 for the private cloud. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's different that matters about the private cloud is the ability to individually <coughs> put um, faculty onto a particular course we can assign as opposed to everybody being a collection of individual accounts. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, play. Please. Get it going. And I, and I just have to, you know, you take this home with you, play around with it, do their, they have a thousand tutorials and they have the most enthusiastic trainer. And he's that way all the time. <laughs> and you'll just get so sick of it after a while. Yeah. It almost cost us buying this yeah. software. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Don't talk to you about the software. Talk to you I did, yes. Yeah. Um, it's really intuitive. You know, and, and I think that, you know, I watched probably 10 or so tutorial videos and everything. And they're just going around with it. And, you know, I mean, I didn't go into depth, like I was doing things like just typing sentences, yeah. like, my name is Karen, you know, but um, I can imagine that if I was starting to build a class and work that, in my mind, I'm starting like, oh, I could do this, or I could do this, oh, so, yeah, no, I think that, I think it's pretty cool. It's <laughs> it's. I really like to sit down and talk to them about this software, this, what their whole process was. It's really an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And even like, you know, I don't know, did you see that That's flip book thing thing that he had? Yeah. You know, there's that yeah. kind of interactive yeah. element, you know, you can uh, highlight text and it can cover over it's a Volkswagen box and drop down. It's a Volkswagen view. It's not a Mercedes. Uh, yeah, um, so, yeah, no, I think there's some pretty cool stuff in it. Yeah. Particularly for, I think one of the things that I would really like about it is adding learning more things that are required elements in my course, but like for people's interests that they can buy either, um, you can add. Uh, not that you couldn't do that in other ways, but I think it would be able So if you want to see line. what the web interface, the like server the interface looks like, this is it. This yeah, is my you know. cloud account right now. And these are courses I'm working on.
And just so you know, there also is a web editor for like fixing text and things quickly. That also works the same way. So a lot of our faculty don't download the, the editor tool. They just do all their work up here at the web. You can't put the elements in. But at least there's that. So like when you went to the online thing and you clicked on creating content, you say yes. And if you're interested, these are the these are where the links live. There's also a dev code. So this is a but product you actually if, don't have to even have in the office. Yeah. You're going to be working on the material. You're going to be on your desktop. And yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're like on vacation and a student class, you need to do work. So you get on your computer and use Firefox to fix the link. I don't see it as it should be nice to work. Yeah. But it would be a be-all and all for me. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's like more for is that what the problem? Going through lessons that are already there. Yeah. So basically, you're able to do that. Any luck on yours? I'm just looking for his stuff. I don't think I can download it. Yeah. You know, and so I didn't want to put it up to not. Be able to do anything with it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 When I was first introduced to Softchat, gosh, it was probably yeah. what year? <laughs> I'd say it was probably like 2009 yeah. or so. Oh, really? I know. And it was like I, 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 that, was, as that was one of the hops. A website organizer, like a <laughs> place to <laughs> organize and make. When people say Java, I say really <laughs> still. And so when I first started day. looking into it for this, I was like, well, this is way different than what I originally was yeah. told. Yeah. So I don't know if I just like came in and it's first. Well, it was really confusing. I promise I didn't want to go to the So some were talking about things. If, if you just if you learn better by watching or, or you're sitting away from Java to figure itself out. One of the things I like about this, let's say, is the rollover capability. So I want this to be a rollover for no good reason. Um, there's something they call text poppers. And so if I go in here and I say, uh, I tell it to use its ears. I'm a better instructor than this. But. OK, so I want that to show up there. And I say, hokey doke. Now, first thing you'll notice, this is not a WYSIWYG editor. <laughs> Again, Java. So we do this. We save it. We preview it, which is confusingly command print or command P. But you'll see that now the word listening has a rollover text on it. And you know, th this is one of my, and you can make this persist. You can put links in there. You can put multimedia in there and all this kind of stuff. Again, I, I'm old. I, I like hypertext a lot. <coughs> and I like these kinds of things a lot. And this is what I've been missing in the web for so long. So that's one very simple tool. And we do that with a lot of our, um, a lot of our, technical documents like this, so we keep a context, but students are getting to where they understand that, yeah, if I don't know what that word means, I can do this. Yeah, you can. You'll notice there are page breaks. This is I mean, really important in the editor. You insert a page break, and that is what literally makes it page two in, on the web. So the page breaks are how you organize this. Yes. How does this work for in regards to the students using it? So when the students use it on a browser, what is what is running? Is it using Java or is it using HTML? It is, it is HTML with JavaScript backup. A, okay, but there's Java in it when the students are using it? There's no Java, but there is the this like that the the text popper is a JavaScript. Oh, okay, JavaScript. And then, yeah. and then what about how the, what about the quizzes and the assessment functions? It's all JavaScript. Okay, that is okay, JavaScript. Yeah, yeah, yeah they are, they have just made the move to HTML5. Soft chalk has. Yeah. Okay. The only edit, the only part of this that's Java is the editor. Is the editor, okay. Right. right. Yeah. It's a script. And then they are a small company and I know they're working on getting yeah. rid of the Java editor. But sure. They're, 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 yeah, no, and 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 then um, and, 
and there's a cost, and it's just there's, there's a cost for. You, you see, there's like a, 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 a basement, so you can you can kind of sneak in if you have a smaller course, or right? Your, how does that work? Well, you can. I think their individual licenses are five hundred a year. Okay, for how many students? Uh, I that I I think that is. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's on here. Sure. For our, we we defined ourselves as 130 faculty and 2,000 students. Sure. So it's for the soft chalk cloud, without all the administration, all the stuff was five thousand dollars a year. Sure. And then it went up to 17 for the full thing. What was the thing you found most? Like the one thing you think, wow, this is just really blew me away. Soft chalk. It takes Microsoft Word for files and turns them into something yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. I mean, well, beyond the learning object repository. Mm -hmm. Okay, get, What's, what do you mean by that? Well, that's where we have content documents stored in a central location and then linked out. So, okay. we, so it's fixed once. Sure, okay. And then many. That, that was, yeah, the beginning is what I was talking about. This is really what we were looking for. It's what I was missing in, in our implementation of Brightspace is they didn't buy the learning object repository. Okay. Most learning management systems don't let you buy it without a learning object repository. Okay. You know, like in Blackboard, when I was running Blackboard, you had your personal, which D2L calls the locker, but it doesn't work that way. In fact, you have individual places to put content, departmental content, and institutional content. Okay. And that that was that's why Brightspace is cheaper than everybody else is that they cart all their stuff out. So we didn't buy that. Okay. And as an online institution, we have to have it. Sure. Oh, yeah. So that was the thing that sold. That this was the best learning object repository I could come up with, short of running my own web server. Okay. Yeah. Which. No. But I mean, the other part is this because the LTI integration, that we can use this as a evaluation platform. Okay. Idiot question. LTI. Uh, it means that the learning management system can talk to it and share data back. Oh, okay, that's okay. So, so like, like when they take a test on this page, that test is shot up, shot up. Okay. to SoftChalk, which then returns it to the grades. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Thank you. Um, when I'm having issues with things, so the permissions that I don't have down, so I want to check. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, I don't crush it. Let's bring it back up to the front here. We're gonna. Um, this will be interesting, I think, for everybody. I'll give you a couple. Um, and by the way, if you're not familiar with the term Brightspace, Brightspace is what Desire to Learn renamed themselves. So when it says Brightspace, and you're thinking about that. They call. It, I will tell you. I was. I was at the at the two years ago. They changed the name, and we were all in a room, and nobody knew this was coming. I was sitting with our administrator. And they said, and now we have rebranded ourselves, and it's now Brightspace by D2L. And, we're going, and Pat looked over at me and said, great. So I went from being a D2L administrator to a BS yes. administrator. <laughs> <laughs> but did they think this through? Uh, I'm sorry, I was going to, I'm not quite set up, but let's see here. The question was, what does, what does this look like for students? So when they're in the desire to learn space or Brightspace, um, what will they see? And my understanding, has anybody played with this in Canvas? Have you, John? Uh, I haven't, but it works fine. It works yeah. the same. Reports that it works fine in Canvas. Mm -hmm. so they do have, like, I just looked it up, and they do have a Canvas integration guide. It's pretty extensive. I wonder if it's turned on here. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a question that will not be. It would not be. No fair telling anybody I did. Right. All right. So this is what a student sees in, in Brightspace slash D2L. I call it Brightspace because I'm stubborn. Um, so this is in a live course right now. And it's a very basic document. Again, it's one of our pilot documents. But they can actually go through and And so then do you create a link to the soft chalk page on, say, your Blackboard mm -hmm. or your... Yeah. Yeah, what you do, and I'm, I'm a little curious as to why I just got that message. Oh, great. So here I am telling you it doesn't, it works fine, and now it's, oh, yeah, it works fine. These are, okay. I like that we have a frame within a frame within a frame. 
Yeah, of course, and that's the other part of it. You know, I, I'm tempted to do this with it and just take it out into its full. You know, just do that by um, uh, default. Who doesn't? But that's the basic idea of what st students are seeing. Um, so, what are your thoughts on it? Did anyone get a chance to get in there and test it out and put something into the document and? So it, it doesn't, the, the formatting between, at least on my computer, the formatting between the, the is it Java? Yeah. The little window that they do for the program, yeah. what it shows on the page is not. It, it is not what you would. It's, it, no. it's anti. I, <laughs> you know, I, I use a, a sound three font and it shows up as a three font, so it's that. Well, it shouldn't be quite that bad, but well, yeah. it, 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 <laughs> I, I said it should. <laughs> okay, I agree that it shouldn't. But anyway, anyway. But, but other than that, I mean, the, the sort of content and, and the other stuff seems very straightforward. What, what's the primary difference between building a page this way and building it directly in something like Brightspace? Is it just that it gives you better access to content? I had Across hair. Multiple. I had hair before I started trying okay. to develop things. No, Brightspace. Brightspace is a quasi HTML editor for its content. First of all, right. so it's very hard to even style in that. We we like have beat the thing into submission and put style sheets, so at least it doesn't look ugly. But Brightspace has a way of changing your HTML code to be what it wants. So it's really hard to get what you want. Plus, you're getting a static page. There's no way to get interactivity in there. It's, you're really taking your life in your hands if you even try to do JavaScript in it. Because you just don't know what it's going to do. Um, the Brightspace window is meant to be a Brightspace's version of HTML. Whereas this is giving you, you know, Ch SoftChalk's version of HTML, which is a little richer set. It's like one step towards. <laughs> yeah. HTML. HTML. And it gives you a, a nice history lesson of what computers were like in the 90s, is what you do. And I mean, that's, again, that, that was the part, like, that, that was, a, it, it was, it was a funny meeting that we all sat around, and everybody was trying not to say exactly that, but does it really look like this? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see, um, for those of us transitioning to Canvas, what those differences are in terms of that content creation, because I think Brightspace is definitely not the best option, but you know, I, you know, in Canvas, the, the content that we've developed, I think that it is one step closer to HTML. So the mm -hmm. difference between something like SoftChalk and something like Canvas, that I think that might be a decision point for some of us in terms of. And then also, obviously, the repo the content, the learning object repository, like we don't have Canvas Commons, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Asterisk. yeah, yeah, okay, good. Um, yeah, I mean, again, it's a matter of rich media. You, no, no LMS HTML editor is going to create a clickable table of contents automatically from a Word doc. Right. And put in embedded, uh, in embed quiz, quizzes that go to the grades and all that kind of stuff. None of them do that. I, I did work with Canvas for a while. It is a lot cleaner. Yeah. And, you know, again, you know, and, and even in our instances, we're putting the content in here because we want the interactivity. We're not putting, like, here's your introduction to the week stuff. That's going into HTML. Because we want, you know, we want our faculty to be able to edit those and personalize those. It's this, this is the stuff where all the design work is going, and this is what we want to keep fairly comp straight ahead so that we all know that when you take Health 209, everybody's getting basically the same thing, even though it's being taught by five different people. So then with this, is each lesson its own kind of soft chalk page? Right. And it's not like the entire course is one? Right. Oh, Excellent. Right. Yeah, and that, that's, uh, that's really, I'm glad you asked that, because that's the hard thing to get your head around. Soft chalk calls these things lessons. Lessons can have multiple pages. Each week of this course has a lesson. So this is lesson seven of, of many. So when I'm done with this thing, there'll be 15 soft chalk documents that are 15 lessons that go into this course. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And they're not 20 pages long. <laughs> now, there was a real quick, and I, let me just, because this was put in the blurb, and I hate to not say this, soft chalk is now able to take these lessons and turn them into an ebook. 
and it's a pretty decent ebook publishing. If you've used iBooks Author, it's about there, but it's cross platform. And I always felt like, again, this is the hyper card thing and making the easy things easier. You know, hey, now you can write a book. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, the software made it easy for you to write a book. Wait, you still have to write the book. <laughs> you still have to put all that stuff in there, so it's a lot of work. But it will format content really well into a freestanding book that is then downloadable on devices and all of that. So it has that aspect to it. The other thing we like about this is a lot of our students, again, working at a distance and oftentimes working with poor connection, like to print out things. And this will, soft check, you can put a print button on them that will allow you to print out the entire lesson in one page. It's also very, a very accessible interface. Um, any, any element that you put in there has a text equivalent, and some of them are actually automatically generated. Not pretty, but a text reader doesn't care if it's pretty. But it puts it on a separate page. It doesn't use an alt tag or the now deprecated long description. So it does some things really nicely. It might, might fit, it might not. And this is one of the things about the actor teaching lab that we like is that every tool, we have not yet, to my knowledge, found the perfect tool. But every tool has something that it does better than some other tools. And, and I don't know, I, part of my hope is that we can sort of make a list of all of the best things about all of the tools and then someday we're going to see one that has them all of them. Oh, you're just the holy grail of course. Well, I, actually, I hope, I hope we don't get to that point because then we're teaching all our classes exactly the same way. Ah. What I hope for is radical destandardization de of the whole business. I hope that we all get so good at computers that we can make courses out of C++ and, and they're interactive and they're exact representations of what we want. That is my goal. <laughs> that is what I want from all of us. I don't say that. I'm known around the office as saying, you have to be taller than this line to go on the ride. Hey, now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Uh, Thank you. And, and, but it's, you know, you know what I mean? You, there, there's technical competence in teaching online. If you're having trouble, you know, I, I remember a very famous tech support a colleague of mine was going through a call, and it finally got to look in the lower left corner of your window. Is it a circle or a rectangle? Okay, you're on XP. And okay, this is not a, you know, there are things you have to know. But, you know, that, that's the, always the trade off. I, I really wish we could go beyond the LMS. I think we can. I think we're so close to that now that that's the next step. But these are the tools that are going to get us there. This is the transition from what we know to what we should be doing. 